Hi everyone, welcome to this new uh, Bachelor Program webinar. Uh, today we have a few guests on the line, so let's start with the presentation. Um, oh. So, we have uh, our Bachelor Program Manager, Audrey. Uh, hi Audrey, welcome to the call. Uh, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, yeah, sure. Welcome everyone. We are happy to see so many people online. We'll make sure uh, that this presentation is as informative as possible and we'll take your questions at the end. So my name is Audrey, I'm the Bachelor Program Manager for the Bull Campus. I've been working at Lyon for 12 years now and my current role is to look after the students from semester three to semester seven to review the program content so that it is accurate with the industry trends and um, to um, be involved into the accreditation processes when uh, necessary. Thank you, Audrey. So we also have some students on the line today. Uh, so Helena is a student from London. Hello, Helena, can you please introduce yourself? Hello, uh, I'm currently a Leon student, bachelor degree. I'm on the uh, fourth semester, in the fourth semester in London. Um, yeah, I'm originally Russian and uh, first semester, as everyone, I spent in Switzerland, then I went to Japan for internship, and then I transferred to London campus for for the rest of the studying. Thanks, Elena. So we should have Maximilian on the line as well, but he had some issue uh, with his sound, so hopefully he can join us later. Uh, we also have Ni on the line. She will introduce herself later, and she'll tell you more about the admission process. So. Let's start with the program. Uh, Audrey, I hand over to you. Okay, thank you. So the uh, Bachelor Program in International Hospitality Business has been uh, designed to give you future students a cutting edge experience, as well as some business knowledge to enable you to enter in your professional life quickly and with the right balance of expertise, skills and attitude. So you will all gain some practical experience via our semester one practical arts semester by uh, practicing fine dining service, culinary arts, enology, front office, housekeeping in a simulated uh, boutique hotel environment on our Glion campus. You will also have some real world experience via our, via our two internships. So on the uh, bachelor degree program, you have a first internship in semester two and then one in semester five, but we'll go into a bit more detail later in the presentation. Um, we are also aiming at giving you um, some hospitality and business-based knowledge via our five academic semesters and the various projects that you will complete. And we also would like you to become some specialist at the end of your studies in your semester seven. Next slide, please. Sophie, I forgot to mention, sorry, Audrey, uh, you can ask questions anytime on this call. You have a question box somewhere on your screen. We are going to answer all of your questions at the end of this webinar. So don't worry if we don't answer to you straight away, we will do it later during this call. Thank you. Okay, so progressive learning and the fact that Lyon is a unique school in, uh, in several ways. So firstly, you will be immersed into a very international environment. We currently have 99 nationalities on campus, which means that in a typical classroom of 35 students, there are in average 22 different nationalities. Uh, Glion is also unique because we really aim at having a personalized approach to the way that we operate and we interact with our students by having some small classes. So for semester one, for example, there is a maximum of 15 students per class. And then for the other academic semesters, there is between 35 and 40 students, which really gives you a personalized access to our faculty member and to your uh, fellow students. Glion is also looking at developing you as a young professional. So, of course, expertise, business knowledge are important, but uh, what employers are also looking for are your soft skills. So anything that is linked with your professional attitude, your personal presentation, the development of your leadership skills through the ambassadors program or our students committees, 
Uh, and we also want to, for you to develop your self-confidence. So when you come out of Lyon, we want you to be really ready to embrace the, the challenges that you will face in the professional world. Lyon is also unique uh, in the professional opportunities that you will have access to. So for the first internship, uh, each student receives uh, on average 7.7 .7 internship offers. And something I think that is really unique is that 98% of our graduating students have one or more employment uh, opportunities at the end of their semester seven. Next slide, please. So if we look at the um, Bachelor in International Hospitality Business program in more details, this is a three and a half year degree program. So a, um, a fast track degree program as opposed to a normal bachelor, pro bachelor program, which is normally four years. We have five academic semesters and two internships. So semester one is a practical arts semester where all the students start on the Glion campus and basically learn by doing into a boutique hotel environment. Uh, all the students also complete two weeks at the Ecole du Cas in Paris. Then for semester two, all the students go on their first internship. This is an internship that is aimed to be at an operational level where we want you to apply the practical skills that you have developed and acquired in uh, semester one. So maybe Elena, you can tell us a bit more about your internship. Yes, yeah, so after uh, finishing my semester one, in two weeks, um, I went on my internship. During semester one, um, we have a lot of help from uh, Glion. Uh, we have an uh, online internship uh, website where we can find all the contact details of the hotels where we want to work. We also have a uh, career day, which is in Bull, and there are around like 80 companies, I guess, like uh, during my year, they were presented there. So you have an opportunity to meet your potential employee, uh, exchange contacts. Um, Glion also helps to build a uh, CV uh, and letter. Uh, so, yeah, basically, that's how it works. And uh, Glion set the contract with the company where you will um, be working during your internship and help uh, throughout the process of visa application. For example, if you are going to another country, you also have an opportunity, I believe, to stay in Switzerland if you want to have an internship there. Um, yes, and if you have any other questions, let me know and I'll answer it. Yeah, thank you. So, yes, yeah, semester two, you will be supported by the careers and internship department uh, to find some uh, offers with your CV, with your letter of motivation, with the first interview that you will have. You have dedicated internship uh, advisors who are here to really guide you and if you have several offers, also advise you on what would be the best offer corresponding to your um, future profile. Then for semester three, um, this is uh, a semester that you can complete in three different locations. You can choose to complete your semester three on the Bull campus in Switzerland, on the London campus in the United Kingdom, or uh, in Spain, in Marbella with our sister school, Les Roches. So semester three is the hospitality fundamental semester. You have seven courses in semester three, such as hospitality marketing essentials, people and performance in the workplace, IT business tool, a foreign language or a general education, elective, financial accounting, etc. For semester four, uh, this is the hospitality management semester that you can choose to complete in four different locations. So again, you can choose to come to Bull in Switzerland, to our London campus, or you can choose to complete your semester four in Spain, in Marbella, or in Shanghai, in China. And in semester four, you go into the managerial concepts of the semester three courses that you have taken. You also have seven courses such as uh, hospitality and events operations, management of rooms, management of food and beverage, managerial accounting, and a foreign language. Then semester five is your, is your second internship. 
uh, this internship needs to be at an administrative level where you will have at least some supervisory responsibilities. You are now in entering your third year in the program. So this second internship that you will complete cannot be at an operational level anymore. It has to be at a higher level. Then we move on to semester six. This is the integrated business strategy semester that you can choose to complete in Bull or in London. And in semester six, you find some courses that you would typically find in a business school. For example, corporate finance, international law and risk management, business ethics, uh, corporate social responsibility, etc. And then for semester seven, you can choose to complete it uh, on the Bull campus or on our London campus. And this is the specialization and capstone project semester. So the students have access to two different types of capstones in semester seven. They can elect to do a bachelor thesis, which is an individual research-based academic theoretical piece of work or an applied business project, which is a group project with a dedicated uh, company and in which you are going to work as a consultant. So at the end of the applied business project, the students have to present their concrete recommendations to the company they've been working with for six months under the supervision of a faculty member. If we move then please to the next slide for the specializations. So we currently offer three specialization, luxury brand management in hospitality, international hotel development and finance, and international events management. These are three different, completely different specializations. The first one, luxury brand management in hospitality, is currently uh, very popular with the students. Um, in this uh, particular specialization, you have 135 hours of specialization and the aim is for the students to analyze different luxury brands in relation to the hospitality industry, to create their own brands at the end of their semester seven and to make sure how, that they will be able via their brands to be different from the, uh, the competition. For international hotel development and finance, this is also a very popular track at the moment. Um, you need to ensure, however, for this track that you really have the uh, strong skills uh, with numbers because this is a challenging track. Um, students typically work on three types of projects for international hotel development and finance. The first project is I'd like to uh, renovate a hotel. So how do I go about it financially? or I'd like to have a hotel built from scratch, how do I go about it financially? Or I'd like to be involved into the development of a global resort and what are the uh, key areas that I need to know about financially. For international events management, I would say that this is a, probably a specialization that is a bit more practical, a bit more hands-on, uh, where the students learn how to plan, deliver and evaluate their events. So together with the uh, student affairs department, the students do deliver real life events on campus, which can be, for example, Glion's Got Talent, the cultural fair, um, MasterChef. So they are the ones creating, developing, creating, implementing, uh, and then evaluating their events. Next, next slide, please. So if we try to, uh, to summarize a bit where you can study, if you choose to do the Bachelor in International Hospitality Business in Lyon, you could study and live up into up to six locations. So for example, all students are gonna start in Switzerland on the Lyon campus with the uh, two week master class at Ecole du Cas in Paris. For my semester two internship, I'd like to do it in the USA. So I go to the USA. For semester three, I'd like to go to Marbella. For semester four, I choose to go to China. For semester five, for my second internship, I'd like to do it in um, Tahiti, for example. For semester six, I go on the London campus. And for semester seven, I go to the Bull campus. So every six months, every semester, you could actually choose to study in a different location. Next slide, please. Thank you. 
So Glion is a school that operates in two countries and three different campuses. The first campus is the Glion campus. So this is the practical learning center. All the students start, as I said, on the Glion campus for their practical art semester one. Uh, it's a beautiful campus. It's located just above Montreux with uh, gorgeous views of Lake Geneva, the Swiss Alps, the French Alps. It's about one hour and 10 minutes uh, from Geneva. On the Glion campus, we can accommodate about 350 students. We have uh, four restaurants on the Glion campus where uh, our students train with our Meilleur Ouvrier de France and also benefit from the gorgeous food. So we have the Bellevue, which is a gastronomic uh, restaurant that is currently listed on the uh, Go and Mio guide. We have the Fresh that offers gourmet cuisine that uh, is going to help you stay fit and healthy and feeling good. We have the club where students can, uh, can go and relax and enjoy the, the view of Lake Geneva. And we have the Skyline where uh, students can take their lunch and dinner. On, the, on all the campuses, we also have a lot of activities, extra activities that are, are organized uh, by the students and for the students. On the Glion campus, we also have a sports center and uh, some students' accommodation. Alina, maybe you'd like to uh, tell us a bit more about your experience on the uh, on the Glion campus. Well, yes, uh, it was wonderful. <laughs> um, around uh, every two weeks, we change our location regarding the department and what we, uh, in which we work on campus. Um, campus has an amazing restaurant, like everyone from the area comes to dine there. So you have an opportunity either to dine there or to serve there and work at the kitchen of this restaurant, which gives you an amazing op opportunity to learn and to see how does it work from the inside and at the same time another day to become a customer and to see how it looks on the surface. Um, it's around 20 minutes walk from Montreux. If you walk in around five or seven minutes by car to Montreux, um, during summer it, uh, Montreux has a famous festival. So depending on where you go to the schools, for example, if you enroll in February, you can have a chance to catch this festival. Uh, yeah. Um, so there are club, as you mentioned, club food, restaurant, um, just like catering. Yeah, I think everything. Um, Montreux has, as I remember, four types, uh, three types of residents, right? It's um, either above the hill or main campus and separate building for guys, I think. Yeah, that could be other buildings that could be in the, in the Glion uh, village in Glion, yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, that's it, I think. Thank you. Next slide, Laurie, please. So the second campus we operate in from semester three to semester seven is the Bull campus. So Bull is a medieval Swiss town that is uh, very active, located in the beautiful surrounding of the uh, Swiss Alps. It's about 30 minutes from the Glion campus. I would say that the uh, Bull campus has more of a business college feel. Um, we have about 800 students on the Bull campus. Uh, we have four accommodation buildings, we have an academic center where students can have access to all the meeting rooms to complete their, uh, their group project. Uh, in addition, on, in the academic center, there is a restaurant where uh, the semester one students also come and practice. Um, we have a sushi bar and a lounge where the students can relax after class. And um, there's also the hub where uh, it's a fast food concept where students can grab and go uh, their uh, lunch or dinner. And there are, as I said, plenty of other activities organized by the Student Affairs Department. Um, and we feel as an institution that it's important that the students also get involved in, the activity, in these activities to or these committees to develop their uh, leadership skills and their soft skills. Next slide, please. And the last campus we operate in is the London campus. 
So our London campus is located on the grounds of the University of Roehampton. So for the University of Roehampton, there are about uh, 10,000 students, 140 nationalities, a lot of students' clubs and organization. For Glion itself, depending on the intake, we have between 250 and 300 students on the uh, London campus. There is one building that is solely dedicated uh, to the Glion students. Um, the London campus is a modern campus, but this is within uh, greenery and a gorgeous park of the University of Roehampton. And it's located about 40 minutes via public transport to um, London city centre. Alina, you have spent now nearly two semesters on the, uh, on the London campus, so I believe you have a lot of uh, experiences you'd like to share with us. Um, yes, uh, I'm a big fan of London campus. I uh, absolutely love it. So we share the facility, as you mentioned, with Roehampton University and Roehampton provides great facility like four floors, library and cafes and campus. Um, I live on campus personally and there are like two two buildings here in particular uh, which belongs only to Glion students. Uh, we have club zone uh, at Roehampton uh, campus so we can party with Roehampton students. Uh, we're located like five minutes by run from Richmond Park and Richmond Park one of the greatest park in UK I believe. <laughs> So uh, London campus is nice because it's quite close to the city. So you have a lot of like every weekend you can go to party to the city or you even every day. Some some of my classmates, they actually live in city center and goes and go to school every day and then come back to city center. So it's not so far. Um, we also have a lot of field trips, which is very convenient because like London can offer a lot of options in terms of Hotel, uh, hotels, fine dinings, and um, different exhibitions dedicated to different topics. So it makes uh, it makes life easier. Uh, it gives a lot of uh, for the project. So we actually can choose a hotel, go to the hotel, talk to the management, um, and make our project and set network. So yes, I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ever going to come back to Switzerland, Elena? Is the question. I'm not sure, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you can see, we have three different campuses, uh, and and every every campus really has their own feel, and the experience is is different. Although the academic program is exactly the same. Next slide, please. So as a summary about uh, Glion, I think what is key to insist on is the fact that we are a very international uh, institution, as I said. We have 99 nationalities on campus, 56% coming from Europe, 33% from Asia Pacific, 5% from the Middle East and America, and 6% from the Americas. Uh, currently, we have a bit more than 1,600 students altogether and a bit more female than male. Our um, faculty are also very international uh, and the ratio is about the same. Next slide, please. So uh, we are not going to talk about the career opportunities today. You can still ask a few questions if you like, but we have another webinar coming uh, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Swiss time. Uh, so I invite you to uh, register to this webinar if you'd like to know more about the internship and the career opportunities. So Nir, I hand over to you. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Audrey and Laurie. Hello, everybody. My name is Nia Timet and I'm the Global Enrollment Services Director. So I work for Summer Education, which um, manages the different campuses of Guillaume, Les Roches and Nicole Ducasse. And my team, um, the Global Enrollment Team, will take you through the holistic approach that we have to join one of the programs. And today we're talking about the programs at Glio. And I've been working at Summer now for two years and based in the London hub. Next slide, please.
So I'll just take you through um, a brief um, summary of what are the key requirements you will need to be able to join one of our programmes at Gliom. Um, next slide, please, um, Laurie. Thank you. I think as any educational institution, we are accredited and we make sure that um, everybody who joins is able to follow the programme. But at the, at the same time, um, we need to also make sure that you have the minimum age to enter because this will automatically impact on your internship opportunities. So for that reason, we have a minimum age starting at 17 and a half, and, and that is for the start of the programme. And you must have completed a senior secondary education and graduated with a diploma. So examples would be A levels, IB, or um, you know, arbitral or maturity for, for the global market that we have. Then we also need to make sure that you're able to follow the programs. So that's why we require you to demonstrate a minimum English level. Um, and for that, we ask for either two years in the school um, where English is the primary language of instruction or um, more commonly the international English language test which is known as the IELTS and um, so the overall level there that we're looking for is 5.5 with a minimum of 5.0 in every subcomponent and or the TOEFL um, as you can see on the screen here 70 for the TOEFL and also um, Cambridge English and if you do have any other type of um, English qualification, we also reviewed those on an individual basis. And in case, as you know, we've got the Glion UK campus, and for that to be able to get a visa for those who need a visa to come to the UK, you would need to have the IELTS for UKVI as part of the um, regulations here for, for visa in the UK. Thank you. Um, Laurie, next, please. So let's see what are the different elements you would need to do um, to get through this admissions process. So first of all, you would need to just make sure you complete and submit your um, application form, um, either you know, online or via your counsellors, wherever you're based. And then we also um, ask for you to get ready for, a, for an assessment. So the assessment can take place in terms of you know, either in country or right now it is mostly virtual. So it will be in the form of an interview that takes place and um, where we really want to assess certain elements um, from your profile. But also you would need to submit uh, your CV or resume, post study plan and also things that you would want to be doing, um, you know, um, and explain to us what are your key motivations to be joining the Glion Bachelor Programme. After all is done, this comes to my team for review and we assess the different elements of it. And then you will be re receiving um, a conditional letter of offer if you have met all the criteria. And at times we understand that you might not have your full, say for example, transcripts or um, educational certificates or English level at the point of applying, but we put these as a conditions for you to be able to fulfill prior to arriving on campus to start your studies. So once all of is that done, you will get your offer letter, which will make um, you aware of the following steps that you need to take. So one of the key steps would be confirming your place, which needs to take place within 15 days of you receiving your offer letter. And that is done usually by making a prepayment, um, a monetary um, value dep deposit that you have to put that confirms your place. And the team will then issue you with all the additional support that you would require. For example, um, if you need to apply for your visa, your attestation will be sent. Um, information of how to book accommodation will be sent. And you, we are guiding you for the whole entire process until you arrive on campus. So all of this would be there. And you would have dedicated groups and support that is provided to you. So you feel already part of the Glion community. Um, even before you arrive here physically with us. And then you arrive on campus on the designated arrival days. For the new arrivals, we tend to, um, and if you are able to arrive on the designated days, we are able to then collect you from the airport in Switzerland and or even the UK. And, <coughs> sorry, and we then make sure you arrive on campus. And a good, important thing to note here is 
anyone starting on a bachelor program for the UK campus will have their first semester in, in Switzerland, first of all, for the practical element. Next slide, please. And then I'll just touch up very briefly about the different criteria that we use for the interview selection process. So we look holistically at your profile and then we would ask you questions regarding um, things you might have done in teams or how we want to assess how you're working with a group and also individually and what is your whole attitude to learning and how you react in certain conditions because you know this industry really is about people, people skills, and we, re we want to make sure that you're ready and you have the right maturity level to be able to take on all of those learning elements. So this is mostly a, a summary of what we ask for interview, but we also want to get to know you on an individual basis, learn to know about you, your hobbies, what really makes you um, motivated to join our programme. Um, next, Laurie, please. Yes, so that's it in a nutshell um, of, of what we do in terms of the enrolment and admissions process. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we do have a few questions already. Um, if you have any more, please uh, use the question box. Um, so uh, uh, do we have a dress code on campus? Elena, maybe you can reply. Yes, we do, but Elena can give you some details. Uh, yes, uh, we have we do have dress code. It's quite strict. Um, everyone has to have a jacket. Uh, um, men has to have ties. Uh, no bright colors. Uh, also during semester one, as you have a lot of practical classes, uh, your hair must be done. It should be tied. Um, yes, yeah, so we do have dress code. <laughs> Yes, but we do have dress code on campus. It will be uh, uh, it will be part of the information pro uh, package that you will receive if you are admitted to Glion. So you will know all the criteria that you have to respect. Uh, and we do check indeed the dress code on campus on a daily basis. Uh, this is part of the professional image that we would like you to have uh, already on campus, and particularly when you go for internships, job interviews, and then in the real world. Thank you. Um, what does the timetable look like in terms of uh, how many days per week, how many hours per day, uh, what hours? Uh, well, I think that's a question for me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so, um, the schedule of semester one is a little bit different compared to the rest of the studies. Uh, during semester one, um, it was different because we have a lot of practical art are so if you start at the kitchen for example for the morning shift sometimes you have to be there by 6 a.m but it means that you will finish around noon or even 11 a.m and then you have lunch and then you have uh in class learning about what you did at the kitchen some conversations some quizzes um so if you start early usually your day finish early as well um we also had during first semester night shifts which is not actually like more like evening shifts so if you work or cook at Bellevue you start your shift around 5 p.m uh so which means that you have class you have class at 2 p.m or 3 p.m at 5 you start practical and you will finish at midnight but it's normal it's kind of prepare you for the real job in hospitality and for your first semester so after a few months you get used to it um and during semester three and four for example in london the schedule is like uh classes start at nine and finish around uh around four usually we do have a lunch break from noon till 1 p.m and we also have like some breaks between classes like for 20 minutes maybe yeah that's it uh any questions regarding what kind of classes do we have or not <laughs> not yet uh do you have anything to add on that Audrey, or shall we go to the next question yes, for semester one it's true that we have some shifts don't forget that uh, semester one is the practical uh art semester and we are 
immersing you into a real world environment. So indeed, you will have some shifts when you start at 6 p.m. and some other 6 a.m. Sorry, and some other shifts when you finish at midnight because this is what you are going to experience into the hospitality industry. Then for the other academic semesters, you have in average, um, I would say between 20 and 24 hours of class a week. That's just class contacts. This is without uh, counting all the uh, homework and projects you are going to be working on. And for semester seven, uh, you have 10 weeks intense of your specialization and uh, 15 weeks total for to complete your, your capstone. So for semester seven, there's about 15 hours a week, uh, but there's a lot of uh, personal work outside of these 15 hours. Thank you. Um, do they get holidays in between the semesters? Uh, yes, we do have. We have uh, Christmas holidays from 22nd, 23rd of December. We also have Easter break for 10 days uh if i remember it correctly we also keep some bank holidays but yes, some bank holidays yeah. very few of them and we also have summer break uh depending on when what is your semester is but most of the time it's like two months during the summer yeah, yeah. correct thank you uh this one is quite funny do you have to be a good cook to apply for the bachelor um no no uh, a lot of my classmates have never hold the knife <laughs> in their hands but um all the chefs uh who are teaching you they pay a lot of attention to your skills so no and you will learn perfect <laughs> fast <laughs> yeah so not an requirement um, I have a question about the master class uh, in partnership with Ecole Lucas. Can one of you uh, give us a little bit more information on that? Maybe near you. Can... Yes. Indeed. So, um, yes, hi again, everyone. So, basically, the master class is expected to be two weeks in Paris, um, where you would go and have a full immersion within, you know, the um, Ecole du Casse atmosphere to understand about the entire um, overview of culinary art and um, especially you know with all the mops that they have on campus there so you would get really part of it it, it is over two weeks and it is included in the whole sort of package of, of how the program is designed for the first semester so that is still on track to happen um, and obviously the, the campus in Ecole du Casse is being built in Meudon um, in Paris right now so you can also have a have a look on, on that, um, but yes, so that this is two weeks in in Paris, um, part of a group that you go. So they have different um, groups going, not everybody at the same time, but uh, this is the plan. Okay. Thank you, Nia. Um, another question for you, Nia. Um, are there any scholarships to help uh, the student financially? So we look at um, everybody's profile individually, and we would obviously try to help where needed. There are um, elements that we can discuss on an individual basis when you would reach out to the counsellors or myself, um, but um, in general we, we tend to support as much as we can, yes. Thank you. How far are the accommodation from the Glion campus? So on the uh -huh. Glion campus you can be, well, you want to answer Elena? Well, no, 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 go so on the Glion campus, you can have accommodation in the uh, campus building itself, or otherwise you have some accommodation that are within the village. Um, Glion is on uh, is on a mountain, so we have a shuttle bus uh, service that uh, takes you from the campus to your accommodation. It's not very far; it's maximum ten minutes. And on the Bully campus, same thing. We have accommodation on campus. We have accommodation uh, outside of the campus, but it's maximum 15 minutes walk. And on the London campus, maybe Alina, you can take this one. Yeah, we have accommodation in London on the campus. So it's like one minute walk from your class. 
from your bed to your class. <laughs> and we also have accommodation and Vox Hall, which is um, around 30 minutes by public transportation. It's closer to the city center, but a little bit further from campus, obviously. Also, a lot of students uh, prefer just to rent their own apartment either around the campus or in city center. That's it. Thank you. Um, are the internship paid? It yeah. depends. Yes. It depends on the offer that you will receive. Some internships are paid, some are not paid, but your employer may uh, provide you with food and accommodation. So it's very individual and it all depends on the internship contract that you will get. Thank you. Uh, more question about the accommodation. So they would like to know the setting of the, of the accommodation. Are you, is it a single accommodation? Are you sharing with other students? Do you have an ensuite? Do you have a bathroom or not? Okay. Um, well, speaking about uh, London campus, each of us either in Vauxhall or who are living on campus here um, of Rockhampton, we have uh, in in room bathroom. So I have my own private bathroom, um, bed obviously, um, table, chair, wardrobe. Uh, in each dorm has from eight to twelve uh, rooms like that, and each dorm has its own private like kitchen. Uh, where it's like two refrigerators, two ovens, so it's plenty of space. Uh, in Vauxhall, it's a little bit different, but you still have uh, your private bathroom. Uh, in Lyon and Montreux, there are different options, I believe. Uh, my option was I had a roommate, but we had our own bathroom. Some people prefer to, uh, to live alone and have their own bathroom, or some people prefer to live alone, but share the bathroom with like among six rooms, I believe on the floor so it depends on your budget it depends on your preferences but overall i think it's for me it's personally it's enough of privacy and yeah accommodations in are very good <laughs> should admit and for the build campus that's the same you can also have single or double rooms and depending on the building in which you are you have shared kitchens where you can all cook together in the evening or you depending on your meal plan you can also choose to eat on campus so there is a variety of options that you can uh, you can access in terms of accommodation on every single campus thank you can we guarantee an accommodation for every student who will come to the campus and then same for the internship are we helping the student to find accommodation for their internship so maybe I'll take the first part of the question. So for the accommodation on campus, accommodation is mandatory from semester one to semester four um, for the Swiss campuses. Uh, then in semester six and in semester seven, the students can choose to um, be lodged externally. Uh, they tend to pass on the flats to one uh, another. So uh, in Bull, there is uh, plenty of flats that are available uh, for the students. Um, for the internship, it's the same. It will depend on your internship contract, but uh, most of the time the employer does offer accommodation with them, but it's not guaranteed. It depends on your contract and on the offer that you will receive. Thank you. A few questions for you, Nia. So uh, back to this master class in partnership with Ecole du Classe, du Cast. Mm -hmm. uh, is there going to have a master class in uh, 2021 in tech? Wh which in tech, sorry, Laurie? Uh, next year in, uh, in February or March. Yes, each intake is intended to have that as the package. So um, we, we are, it's actually starting this intake in autumn this year. And uh, obviously that would be a rolling, the plan is for it to be at each intake anyway. I haven't got any different information so far, but obviously we'll cancel you as you get through the process. And when are the different intake? So for example, this for this, in, for this autumn, the intake is in October for the bachelor degree in Lyon. And for next year, it is in, for spring, it is in March um, 2021. 
Um, so that's what we have so far confirmed. Thank yeah. you. Uh, a few questions for you, uh, Elena. Uh, so how's the student life? So maybe you can talk for, for London because it's it's fresh in your in your mind. Sure. Uh, well, student life is great. Um, we have different comedies, especially for people who live on campus. It's much, much easier to um, like go parties together, ha host parties on campus. Every Friday, we usually host something. Also, SGA provides a lot of like opportunities uh, for, um, to go to the club all together. Or we also have different comedies, like dining comedy, for example. Like last semester, it was very popular. So there are like around 10 people who organize uh, different dining experience around London and a high-end restaurants and school provide the budget and like pretty much every week we had an opportunity to apply and to attend which is for free or with a small amount paid for example go to Michelin restaurant and you pay only 20 pounds you go with your classmates uh, you experience this um, you extend your network with the uh, restaurants like staff and managers um yeah sg uh provides a, does a lot of job in in this term and all the committees um yeah we also have sport committee in gleon bull i believe which is very popular now um we also have a net networking committee who hosts different events and invite People if from you want the now, we can leave the Swiss part to Audrey. Maybe she'll have more to tell us. Sure. Well, then. sure. So we have a student affairs department who is um, dedicated to organizing uh, activities on campus for the students. So it can be that you have some activities uh, at the weekend. So, for example, uh, they organize some uh, weekends in France, in Europa Park, in Milan. Uh, we also have some activities that are on campus, so you have some sports, you have uh, yoga classes, you can have Zumba classes. On the Guillaume campus, we have a sports center. All students on the Bull campus have free access to Let's Go Fitness, to the tennis club, to the squash club. And on top of that, uh, we have as part of the Students Government Association, some committees that are founded uh, by the students. Um, we have, for example, the networking committee where every single semester, the students organize a conference on campus. So they organize it from scratch. They have to find the guest speakers. They have to set up for the day. They have to find a master of ceremony. Um, and then there's a gala dinner. We have a wine committee where students can gain extra certification about wines. We have a sports committee. We have a charity committee. Uh, we have a graduation committee who's in charge of organizing the graduation dinner. So really a lot of activities that you can participate in. You will not be bored. We will make sure of that. The, uh, the, the Glion experience is, of course, an academic one, but there is also a life outside of your studies. You are students and um, we make sure that uh, we, you are integrated as well via these, uh, these committees or these activities. Um, maybe something we haven't really spoken about is the fact that when, when you enter in Glion, you, you feel like you really are part of a big, big Glion family. Thank you. I also want to uh, to let you know that we have another webinar next week on Tuesday about the student life. So we'll tell you more about the student life on the three different campuses. So if you have any more questions on that, you are more than welcome to join. Uh, you can register on our website. Um, can we talk about the assessment? How are they? How many? What does it look like? Elena, would you like to start? Okay. Uh, well, during the first semester, uh, because we had different practical arts and it was it it changes every two weeks. So as soon as the models finish, we have we had a quiz based on the information we learned. Uh, what is hygiene techniques? What is the rules? So etc. About products. About everything. And starting from semester uh, during semester two. 
we have online courses as well we have to we have to do it's more related to your work experience we need to write like regarding this or that topic uh, what we face during the real life experience um also during semester three and four we have midterms uh it's usually a group assessment or it is a, an exam and the final exams uh some subjects changing for example during midterm you have an exam but your final will be uh, your group project and mark you get is like either 60 percent towards 40 per versus 40 percent so it's average by then you get the average based on the two assessments mm -hmm. then speaking about london i believe uh, swiss as well because education is the same yes so the swiss campuses follow the same uh, assessment methodology uh, the assessments are the same, the final exams on both campuses. So depending on the transferable skills that needs to be assessed in the course, you have a minimum of two assessments and these assessments are in line with the skills that we are testing for each course. So for example, you could have indeed a midterm exam or a final exam, but not only, you could have some group projects, you could have some individual projects, you could have a presentation, you could be asked for your research methods course to do a, a conceptual poster, you could also be asked to do a debate in ethics. So there is a variety of assessments depending on the nature of the course and on the transferable skills that we are assessing. It's not standard midterm and final exam. Every single course has a minimum of two assessments that are different. Thank you. Um, Elina, can you please tell us more about your internship? Uh, where was it? What type of task did you do? Okay, uh, well, my internship was at Hyatt in Tokyo. I did it in Japan. Uh, I found it through a Korean internship department ba based in Lyon in Switzerland. They provide all the information, how I did it, uh, they provide all the information, like all the HR contacts uh, from all the hotels they have in Japan. And I basically just sent to all of them letters, a cover letter and uh, my CV that uh, I would love to do internship there. So that's how I found uh, and that's by Hayat in Tokyo. I did cross training with it, uh, which is quite unusual, uh, but they proposed me to change the departments depending on the time. For example, I did F and B for three months. Then I had like. 10 days of uh, housekeeping experience where I have been with a supervisor and I have learned how they manage like uh, to do housekeeping through outsourcing outsourced company. Uh, I also did guest relations um, during two months. Overall, it was 24 weeks. Um, during f &P service, uh, first First half was only was only back office, and then they put me on the floor so I could serve people during the breakfast, for example. Uh, I didn't know any Japanese, but it, of course it's preferable. But unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, so uh, I worked mostly only during the morning when most of the foreigners were in the restaurant, so it was easy to participate to speak talk to them. Um, by the end of my experience, I've learned some Japanese, obviously. Um, I worked, um, well, uh, after what I learned from my classmates, Japan is not very tough in terms of work, to be honest. I think like to work in Emirates is much, much harder. So don't be afraid about Japanese working lifestyle. They are very conscious about foreigners in, in turn, so they will never ask you to work like 20 hours without break. So I worked around um, nine, uh, I worked uh, seven hours, 45 minutes. And then I also had like one hour break. So in total, it was overall nine hours. Uh, they provide uh, food. Um, I got salary, which is around $1,000. Um, but I had to find my own uh, accommodation. Overall, I think it's, I love my internship. I, I appreciate this opportunity because it's one once in a life opportunity to live in Japan for six months to have 
to work there, to meet people there, and to learn this culture. So I'm very uh, grateful to Glion for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, so that's how it was. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, a few more questions for Nia. So back to Nia. Um, so we have a few people on the line that are worried because they can't get their IELTS right now. So do we provide any help? Absolutely. And I think we are very much aware of current global situation um, in terms of, you know, you're not able to sit an exam or do indeed the English test. And I don't know if you're aware that there is a special edition that is called IELTS Indicator that is now available and has just been released from the 22nd of April. So we are accepting that. Um, it is home-based tests and you don't need to go anywhere. So I would encourage you to um, explore that option. We also accept um, TOEFL home edition. Um, so that would be the other option that we have. But obviously, if you know that you have done certain of the elements that we require anyway, like two year, um, learning in an English environment full time, um, different other possibilities that we could see your profile and see, okay, you don't need to provide that, you can be exempted from certain things, please feel free to reach out and we will be delighted to offer you alternative sort of solution to enable a successful arrival and joining the programme. Thanks, Laurie. Thank you. I also have a question about AP credit. Do you accept AP credits? Which one is that, sorry? IT a or AP? IP or IB? I, sorry. <laughs> IB, yes, we do. We do accept international baccalaureate um, on our, as an entry requirement. So if you have done that, um, yes, absolutely. The minimum will be 24 credits. Thank you. And for this um, uh, master class in Paris, so yes. how does it work in terms of accommodation and travel? Do we take everything is it, or is it at the charge of the student? So basically, um, the whole thing is orchestrated by the campus team. So once you have arrived um, for your practical semester on the bachelor program, you would have the immersive experience. So the whole thing is during your semester one and it would be, um, you know, you will be taken a uh, part of this group. It is like a two week expedition, if you wish, in terms of the, you know, understanding the, the ecology class philosophy and um, it would be provide, everything would be provided for, for you for that two weeks. So co the course would include like, you would have lunches in, in the signature restaurant of, Alain du Gas, you would have visits to fresh produce markets and um, different production facilities, field trips to five star hotels and all of that um, for you to be able to discover the universe of du Gas, the whole thing would be taken, you will be taken care of if you, if you see what I mean. Thank you. Last question for you Nia and then we'll close this webinar. Uh, yes. so uh, you talk about the application process, but at the moment, how does it work? Because obviously we can't do face to face. Yeah, absolutely. I think we are all having to um, reimagine the way we work, operate, talk and interact. And obviously you're able to just browse our website, download an application form. You can just uh, connect with us. We, we will be doing different um, virtual interviews, if, you, if that's what uh, the question is about, the assessment. Um, but almost it is where the assessment is really to understand you as a person. So you would anyway have your study plan that you would need to complete, but also the chat is done via like a, an interview via Zoom or via a different platform that will be available. So yeah, that, that is um, ongoing. There are no um, you know, impediments in terms of progressing with your application at this point. We, all the teams are available for, to support you and to understand you as individual and your current circumstances and find the best um, you know, fit for, for your current uh, position. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you very much. So if you have any more questions, I invite you to go on our website. You, you have the URL on your screen right now. Uh, you can either download the brochure or get in touch with me or one of, his, one of her team members via contact Get the contact form. Uh, you can also ask any question to our student ambassadors like Elena uh, via the page Talk to a Student. Uh, so yeah, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any more questions. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nir, Audrey, and Elina for your time. It was great to hear all of this information from you. And thank you, everyone on the line. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.